You know what they call 100 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona? Uh, winter weather? No, yeah, what cool, cool winter weather. That's what it was in Denver today, 100, 100. High 90s as we get ready for game three of this four game set between the Rockies and the Cincinnati Reds. Monday night went well, last night not so much. In front of a 4th of July crowd, the Rockies fell eight to one. The field looks pristine, another big crowd expected at Coors Field, John Gray collecting his thoughts as he gets ready to go. Pat Baleka, who is in the foreground, he'll be in the lineup tonight. He'll be at shortstop for Trevor Story, giving him a break. Billy Hamilton had a big night last night. He had a couple hits and drove in a couple of runs. He'll be atop the Cincinnati lineup. He forgot a helmet. Billy, you got to wear a helmet when you go uh, up to the uh, plate in the big league. Southwest batting order after the very fast Billy Hamilton, Zach Cozart. And Joey Votto, the Rockies actually, despite losing by seven runs last night, kept those two pretty quiet. Scooter Jeanette's going to bat cleanup. He had a home run off the bench yesterday. A Eugenio Suarez will bat fifth. Scott Shebler homered yesterday. Jose Peraza, same deal. And then Tucker Barnhart and Scott Feldman. That's one through nine in the batting order for Brian Price. And John Gray making his uh, second start since returning after missing quite a bit of time with the broken foot. It's always good to see the big Oki out on the mound. Yeah, he was fantastic in the start against the Arizona Diamondbacks. That was one healthy lineup, and it's another one he'll have to face tonight with the Cincinnati Reds. I love his fastball. He's going to use it a lot, but the slider has been the pitch for him. He's mixing in more curveballs this year than we've seen in the past, and the occasional changeup. For me, it's commanding fastball. If he can command his fastball, and set up the secondary pitch, the slider, and the curveball, he should fare well tonight against the Cincinnati Reds team. Here's the Rockies with the gloves. They've committed the fewest errors in the National League. Best fielding percentage as well. And left to right in the outfield, it'll be Tapia, Blackman, and Cargo. And there is the aforementioned Pat Vileka. He's played a very good shortstop, very steady. Amarista's with him. And then it's Arenado and Reynolds on the corners. Ryan Hannigan, the uh, longtime Cincinnati Red, will be catching against his uh, former club tonight. Here's Alexi. It's his fifth start at second base. He was there yesterday. DJ LeMay, who the, the groin is is sore, and, and that's why they're staying away from him for a couple of days. But he did take batting practice out on the field, so it's not as if he's not available. He is. And he was taking ground balls at second base. He was making turns on double plays with Trevor and Nolan. Saw him run some sprints, too. Bud said he's available for pinch hitting. One of the nice things, Spill, you played on uh, a lot of different baseball teams at a lot of different levels and you probably had a number of teams where there you, you could you could pick on one hand the guys that really truly wanted to play every day with the rockies there's a whole bunch of guys that do not like to miss ever nolan's that way dj's that way ian desmond he cannot stand missing games they're gamers. They want to be Charlie Blackman. They want to be out there every moment that there's a baseball game. Yeah, TJ's the type of guy that if you're going to not put him in the lineup, you're going to have to have a closed door meeting and explain why you're not playing tonight. Same with Desi, same with Nolan. So here we go. Hamilton steps in against John Gray. And he swings at the first pitch and he's lined at the center, and Charlie's got it. He's on pace for 27 pitches. I've not seen one of those before of you. Never. You'll never, you'll, you'll never see it. We're not going to see that? Okay. I don't think so. One pitch, one out, and that'll bring up Zach Cozart. Zach Cozart, his first six years in the big leagues, hit 246, an on base percentage of 289, and 385 on the slugging side. So the slash was 246, 289, 385. Then Zach Cozart relaxed his hands at the plate. He's now 313, 394. 541 and what do you call him an all-star an all-star and you know what else Cincinnati they figured they'd part ways with him at the end of the year now all of a sudden they want to keep him in the fold as part of their uh, their future there's a 1 1 on Cozart and Charlie's gonna get another opportunity two outs he's also on an interesting pace all 27 outs. Not going to happen. Here's Joey Votto. Well, the good news last night, Spilly, we were talking about it. Votto didn't do anything. He's one for eight. The one was a home run on Monday night. 
in this series. And ordinarily, you think, boy, if you keep Votto quiet, and this year if you keep Cozart quiet, you've got a really great chance for success. Good looking pitch on the inside corner at 97. It's one and one. Votto was 0 for 5 yesterday, just the second time this year that he was 0 for 5 in a game. The other time was April 11th against the Pirates in Pittsburgh. It's tied with the NL lead in home runs at 24, tied with Cody Bellinger. And for me, whenever you see somebody with the ability to get on base like Votto does, 421 on base percentage, the 56 walks, it just tells you how locked in he is at the plate. He does not expand his strike zone, which I appreciate. It reminds me a lot of Todd Helton. Here's the one, two. And that was in there, 98. John Gray pumping fastballs to Joey Votto. The Rockies pitchers the last two nights, Kyle Freeland and John Gray so far, they're wanting to pound Joey Votto underneath his hands. Because he likes to let the ball travel, he's going to have to cheat to get the barrel to it. And he kind of blocks this one out to left field. Tapia puts his hand out. Three fly balls and a very nice start for John Gray. It took him only nine pitches. Goals last night in producing just one run. Charlie Blackman, the All Stars batting 312. He's driven in 59 with 18 home runs to boot. Southwest batting order for Buddy Black this evening. Rymel Tapia, he's been outstanding. He'll bat second. Then it's Nolan and Cargo. Mark Reynolds had a couple of hits to uh, break out of a slump yesterday. Pat Vallejo batting an RBI spot. Then it's Amarista, Ryan Hannigan, and John Gray to face. Scott Feldman, who started on opening day for the Red Spilly. It's the third time in his career for three different teams he has started opening day. Also, one year with Texas, one year with Houston. Pretty amazing. Former 30th rounder back in 2003 out of the College of San Mateo. He's a guy that mixes in his cutter with the curveball, likes to pitch inside the lefties with the cutter. He has been the Reds' best pitcher. Leads the team in wins, innings pitched. And he's on a stretch right now. Four quality starts in the last five starts for him. Pitched very well against the Chicago Cubs. Going seven innings and limiting damage. So Blackman steps in against the veteran Feldman. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Ball's going to move both ways. He's going to cut it, as you said. He has... To right, he's a real good glove side sinker. And they're going to come way inside right now. And that misses one ball, one strike. Tuck, talking with Tucker Barnhart this afternoon. And they're guys that are really fun and comfortable to catch because they hit targets. And 
He said Feldman is definitely one of those guys. He enjoys catching him. And as you talked about it in the open, especially of late, he's been really strong of late. Two hit. It's over seven shutout innings against the Cubs in his last outing. His prior start was seven innings. Allowed just two runs in that one. And that's a good start for Charlie. Pulled his hands in and ropes one to right. Lead off base hit for Blackman. Leadoff hitters came into today's game with the 416 on base percentage against Feldman. That's the second highest in the National League. It's a perfect opportunity to get the Rockies on board. And with Rymel Tapia, the last 26 games, it's June the 6th, 366 batting average, two home runs, two triples, four doubles, 19 runs. It's very few times in baseball that you get an opportunity to really play. Brad Mel is getting this opportunity because of Ian Desmond, because of Gerardo Parra, because of Carlos Gonzalez. And he's showing the front office and the coaching staff why they are so high on him. Rymel squared around to Bond, even with Suarez about 80 feet away. He's in on the grass. Again, he squared around. That looked like it was up in the zone, but it's called a strike by Kerwin Danley. So it's one and one, and it did catch the very top corner. And it's a good decision by Tapia. Not a pitch you want to bunt. You risk bunting that in the air, don't you, Spilly? Yeah, there's times where a pitch up in the zone away from you, you can pop it up. But he keeps showing the bunt towards third base. If you're bunting, you're pulling it towards first. Suarez still in on the grass. One and one. Charlie takes off, and the bunt goes right back to Feldman. And it'll go in the book as a sacrifice. That's obviously not where Tom B wanted to uh, get the bunt down. You see where the Rockies are, though, offensively. It's, it's like we're, we're going to try to build a run and, and start small. Charlie looked at Zach Cozart after he stole that base because Charlie had a great jump at first. He was curious what happened. Cozart told him he bunted straight back to the pitcher. But the Rockies are in desperate need of finding some sort of offensive stability, trying to get that team offense going. Last night, 10 singles, that's fine. But there were opportunities throughout the game for the Rockies to build innings, but because they didn't run the bases properly, they failed to score on some runs. And from a slugging percentage, standpoint the Rockies are middle of the pack in the National League which is very unlike Colorado and should be unlike this lineup that they present on most nights though tonight you only have four guys that were in the original starting lineup opening day and though Mark Reynolds has had an all-star caliber first half if you go back to late February there's only three guys really in the lineup who you expected to be in the lineup Nolan obviously Cargo and Charlie Mark's been a terrific story, and so now you count four if you go back to opening day. But Story's out of there, LeMay, who's out of there, Desmond's out of there. And Hannigan, you know, wasn't with the team then. Do you feel like it, it puts, I don't want to say undue pressure, but the Nolans, and the Charlies of the world feel like, man, we it's its on us right now yes. because we're scuffling. No doubt. I mean, mentioned last night, there's a difference for a hitter's approach when you're trying to hit the ball hard and then when you're trying to get a hit. Good eye from Nolan. Three and one. Listen to a hitter when he's hitting well. They'll say it. Every interview they give, I'm just trying to hit the ball hard. Get my pitch and hit the ball hard. Nolan was tardy on that pitch. And again, Feldman's not going to overpower you. That's an 88 mile an hour fastball. Almost as if he was looking at something else. 
Well, Feldman wants to go to his curveball. That's his best secondary pitch. Feldman reached back and grabbed 92. Trying to see if he could sneak a pitch past Nolan. Flashing back to when he wore younger man shoes. One out, we're in the bottom of the first. Rockies trying to break the ice. Blackman singled. Sacrificed to second by Tapia. Down the line, out of play. Nolan has been fantastic this season. His all-star year, 363 with runners in scoring position, but even better, 413 with less than two outs in runners in scoring position. Feldman in the past has induced a fair number of ground balls. This year, been a higher rate of fly balls, though he's been pretty successful. And he gets the strikeout on Nolan. And that was the curveball. Two outs, it'll bring up Carlos Gonzalez. The Reds, as we told you throughout the series, are also very sound defensively. Scooter Jeanette has always been a second baseman. He's got the long glove. He's out in left field to get his bat in the lineup. Billy Hamilton, he can cover a lot of ground in center. Scott Shebler can play center. He's a good outfielder. He's in right. Suarez, Cozart, Peraza, and Joey Votto in the infield. Cozart, good defensively. Votto, very good defensively. And Tucker Barnard's always taking great pride in receiving the baseball. Second highest fielding percentage in the National League behind the Colorado Rockies. Billy Hamilton leads the National League with outfield assists in center field. Billy may be a skinny guy who's known for his speed. Billy can throw. Cargo two hits yesterday. Tracked that nicely. Ball one. Going back to Dolan's at bat, those are one of those. As a hitter, knowing that first base is unoccupied, knowing that cargo is struggling, you can overthink yourself in those type of at-bats, thinking that Feldman might not want to challenge you. Outside cargo has seen Feldman a couple times. He has a double against him. The guy on deck has seen him more than anybody. Mark Reynolds and Mark is four for ten with a home run against Scott Feldman. Marco's got a 2 0 pitch. And then a pitch up in the zone called the strike again, so it's two and one. But it did catch the top portion. Cargo and RBI in each of his last two ball games. First time since May 11th and 12th that he's driven in a run in back to back ball games. Foul down that left field line. Even in the count, close to 80% of the time, you're going to see cutter or fastball. See if he tries to tie up Cargo inside. He went curveball. Cargo saw it well again. He saw the first breaking ball he threw to him well. And now it's three and two. I would not be surprised with first base unoccupied. I know it's the first inning. Feldman's never been a guy. He's not a stuff guy. He's not going to give in. It's not going to be three two. Here comes a heater down the middle. Normally his curveball sits about 90 75 miles an hour. That was the wipeout one. He went 80 miles an hour on the curveball inside to cargo. Outside, he walks up. So two are on. A patient at bat by Carlos Gonzalez and Mark Reynolds, who 
snapped an 0 for 18 with a couple of uh, broken bat singles last night. So far for me, the Rockies have had three quality at bats. Charlie with the single, Tapia moving a runner over, that's a quality at bat for me, and Cargo with the walk. In general, you want to get about 12 quality at bats per night. Here's Reynolds with two outs and two on. I'm trying to remember, there was a year that the Rockies always keep track of it, but it yep. became a team pride thing. Were you were you playing yes, with the Rockies? Yes, I was. Then? Yeah, they, they had a matrix that proved to the team what quality of bats would do over the course of the game. And they, and they called found, team at bats. And they found that if you had over 12, the winning percentage jumped over 60 percent. We're gonna we're gonna keep track tonight. There you go. Now, if you get into the 14s and 15s, it goes to 70% winning percentage. And anytime you have more quality of bats than the other team, it's typically a 70% win percentage. One and two. So if you want to score at home along with us tonight, Quality at bats. This is what a quality at bat is. A walk, hit by pitch, a base hit, and any time you move a runner over. And Reynolds goes down. Feldman strikes out Mark for his second strike out of the inning. The Rockies will leave two on. We'll go to the second. No score. Route Sports is brought to you by the 2017 Toyota Tundra in your hometown Toyota stores. By Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two-for-one Rockies club-level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. And by Southwest Airlines, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. This park setting. Beautiful summer evening. Temperature still well above 90 degrees here at Coors Field. Scooter Jeanette batting cleanup against John Gray. Jeanette is homered in each of the first two ball games here. Last night, a pinch two run home run against Adam Adovino. Seven for 11 this year against the Rockies. John Gray will try to cool him off. Scooter Jeanette is from Sarasota High School in Sarasota, Florida. And um, you know who else went there? Ian, Ian Desmond. Han Han Ian Desmond. Ian's known him for a long time. He, he said, <laughs> he's four years older. He said, yeah, I remember him. He was a pain in the neck. And then 
he was kidding, obviously. He said he's always been a good, good little player. And uh, they got together, hugged it up on Monday. Got to visit a little bit about their hometown. Did he go around? Yes, according to Bill Miller, two and two. Scooter's had 14 home runs this season in less than 200 at bats. That ties a career high for him, dating back to last year with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he did that in 498 at bats. That that's big boy pace. I mean, this is shattered bat, and Boleka just didn't pick up the ground ball. That is a costly error in that instead of having the first man retired, now you have the first man on. Fastball jams Jeanette. It's just a poor play by Valeka. A little in between hop and Subaru Supermo. Caught right off the heel. Just bragging on the Rockies defense and how solid Pat's been. He commits just his second error of the year. That'll bring up Suarez. Ball one. Well, just to finish on Jeanette, the 14 home runs, what you say, in less than 200 at bats. A starter in the big leagues, a guy who plays every day, he's going to have over 600 plate appearances. So you're talking about a guy that's on a home run pace. He's not going to get the at bats to do that. But 40 plus home runs. I mean, this guy's been a nice little find for Cincinnati. One and one. There's a lot of guys in the league this year that are on pace to shatter their career home run best. Brett Gardner with the New York Yankees has 15 home runs right now. His career high is 17. He's on pace to hit 30. He ought to in that ballpark with that right field wall. Well, Aaron Judge hit home run number 29 today in New York. He could hit him out of any ballpark yet constructed. One ball, one strike on Suarez. We're talking about Scooter Jeanette, Ian Desmond, Sarasota High School. Do you realize that 17 major leaguers have gone to Sarasota High? That's a ton. Because you went to a high school that's turned out a lot of big time athletes. Santa, Santa Barbara, Barbara High. high. Yeah. Athletes, but not baseball players. Randall Cunningham. He's number one. Oh, he's not number one. He's number two, isn't he? We have a Hall of Famer. That's what I, I've, I've almost forgot. Eddie Matthews. Eddie Matthews is number one. And then Jesse Roscoe, who has the most appearances in Major League Baseball as a relief pitcher. Watch Jesse Roscoe growing up. Great New York Met. Former Met, Wayne Garrett, 69 Miracle Mets. He went to Sarasota High. Derek Lilliquist. Been eight big leaguers from Santa Barbara High. After Eddie Matthews and Ryan Spielberg's, huh? Yeah. Done. <laughs> Any current guys, Billy? No, the most current one was Court Phelps. Uh, was an infielder with the Indians. Dylan Axelrod is pitcher. Had some time with Chicago White Sox, but it's been a while for him. Two and two. Runner takes off, swung on a miss, throw to second. Safe. Scooter Jeanette underneath that throw and tag. So one out. And Gray will have to deal with Jeanette being at second. Scott Shebler coming up. Just the second stolen base this year for Scooter. Shebler homered last night. And that's 
chop foul. Scott's another one of those guys. Love telling these stories. You know, for every, for every Mike Trout, for every you know, Clayton Kershaw, guys that were identified, John Gray, that it would high, high picks in the first round. Even though, in the case of Mike Trout, he was in the 20s. I think he's 25th. So a lot of teams have missed on Mike Trout, but he was still a first-round pick. Scott Shebler coming out of high school in Iowa had no offers. D1, D2, T3. He had more offers to play safety in football. Went to a junior college. And he has come into his own in a Reds uniform, former Dodger. When he was coming up with the Dodgers, their outfield was really crowded because they still had Ethier and Crawford. Week. Jock Peterson is coming up through the ranks. Yeah. Shebler was a 26 round pick. At a Des Moines area community college. As he calls it, DMAC. That was the, that was the, only, uh, the only school that offered his hometown of Des Moines. Ran into the coach at the barber shop. You want to play for us next fall? Please, yeah. I'm in. O2 upstairs, one and two. Since we're talking about obscure beginnings, Ryan Hannigan behind the plate today was a Division II undrafted signed by the Reds back in 2002 out of Rollins College. He wasn't even the starting shortstop when he was there, he played infield. Think about that. And then he became a catcher eventually. Ron's always had a good baseball program at the D2 level. Dan O'Dowd went to Rollins. 1 2. 2 and 2. And again, parts of seven seasons with the Cincinnati Reds. Caught 460 ball games for Cincinnati, which is 14th on their all time list. And as long as the Reds have been around 136 plus years, pretty impressive. Always come back to that, uh, you know, my favorite line chip on the shoulder guy. Shebler's got it. Hannigan's got it. 2 2. Swung on and missed. Second out of the inning. Big John strikes out Shebler. Not out of the woods yet. Got to get Peraza with Jeanette still at second. Good slider by John Gray. Perfect location. And he really sells it. His arm speed when he throws the slider, it mimics fastball. It is hard to tell if it's fastball or slider. Some guys will slow up their delivery with curveballs and change ups and, and the smallest variance in how you pitch. A hitter can pick that up. Peraza's feet have to move. So going back to Hannigan, his best friend is a guy named Kevin Davidson, was drafted by the Houston Astros in the 28th round. And so Hannigan always wanted to be a catcher. But because his friend was a better catcher than him at the time when he was at Rollins, played infield and outfield. But all during that time frame, while he's playing infield, outfield, was still working with his buddy Davidson on his catching skills. Davidson and Hannigan are still friends. They still work out. Davidson no longer playing baseball, but they still work out together. That's neat. You hear stories like that, Spilly, too, with pitchers that, you know, when they go back to their hometown, they'll throw to their high school catcher, who, you know, is probably a nice player, but obviously these guys like yourself who play out here are freaks. They, they got to the highest level, but they'll still work out with their buddies. And the bond is baseball, no matter where you end up playing at what level. 2 and 0 right now on Peraza. And 
John with a slider that backed up, but it froze Peraza. Two and one. Peraza homered in last night's ball game to left. Got a pitch up from Freeland. And this is on the ground right at Mark Reynolds. That's a good piece of pitching right there. After the error by Valeka, John Gray picks him up. No score, middle of two. Game. Time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. There's Scooter Jeanette. And Drew was talking about how he went to high school in Sarasota. Well, he was born in Cincinnati. And we give you the top 10 players born in Cincy in terms of games played. Now, there have been 200 from that city in the big leagues. Pete Rose up top. Then it's Barry Larkin, Jimmy Wynn, Gary Maddox, David Justice, Miller Huggins, Bill Doran, Lance Johnson, David Bell, and Shannon Stewart. Uh, no surprise, since the Reds started in 1881, there's a lot of ball players, not only from Ohio, but from the city of Cincinnati, guys. Hey, Mark Jr. wasn't born there, huh, Ken Griffey? I, he, he's, he wasn't on the list. I, I, I was thinking that. Somebody said it to me the other day, and I'm, I should have checked that, but I don't think he was born there. Dougie? Not in Cincinnati. Does Doug know? He's going to double check yeah. right now, because I would have thought, I would just make it a guess, I would have figured, right. he, but maybe he was born somewhere else. Here's Pat Valeka, Patty Barrels with the single to center field. He was born in Pennsylvania, Denor, Pennsylvania, the same town as Stan Musial. How about that, Mark? Right. You know what? I, I did know that. So he wasn't on the list. A lot of great names on that list. Um, and I know I've, been, I've gone through players from Ohio like, you know, Cy Young, Mike Schmitz from Dayton. Doug, you'll know that. Uh, it's a, it was a hotbed, obviously, for baseball back in the day with the Reds being such a storied franchise. What town in Jersey are you from? Hoboken, Mark? Where are you from again? I, I'm born and raised in Trenton. Trent? Yeah. Trout Downing's hometown. Al Downing, who gave up famously home run number 715 to Henry Aaron. Correct. Uh, Trenton, does Trenton still have, years and years ago, after he had retired, um, I was doing games for another network with Rick Cerrone. And Rick Cerrone owned. The Trent, no, he owned the, he owned the Newark Bears. Never mind, it wasn't Trent. He it's the Trent an, Thunder, an which is double A team, I think, yeah. of the Yankees right now. But Newark had a had an independent team, right. one of the more well known independent teams, kind of like St. Paul. Wayne Krenchicki is from right up the river, from Trenton. There's a name for yeah, the Remember past. him? Yeah. Uh, former Red. Absolutely, he was a former Red. Here's Amarista, and he takes a quality swing. Amarista is not originally from Cincinnati. 
did I tell you that story cargo was where we were in Chicago and cargo who's always he and Park could be the life of the clubhouse right he was wearing out Amarista who they love everybody adores Alexi right because Alexi's favorite he, he said his favorite sport in his hometown is basketball he said how can basketball be your favorite sport he goes you, you're not tall enough for basketball to be your favorite sport in your hometown it's just it was comical Muggsy Bogues was a good short basketball player Lexi could post up Muggsy kind of like three inches on Muggsy Muggsy was five three Isaiah Thomas for Boston Celtics he's about the same size right a little bigger two strikes on Amarista Volek at first nobody out no score that's up top ball one one and two I'm racking my brain right now trying to remember a player whose dad was a former big leaguer but was born where his dad was playing winter ball. That's an interesting one. Having Dougie research. The name is very familiar. I wanted to say it was Jerry Harrison Jr., but it wasn't. Jerry working with the Dodgers in a television capacity now. Just saw him last week. There's a line shot. Oh, man. Off the glove of Jeanette, and fortunately, Amarista kept running. That's not Jeanette, excuse me, that's Peraza. Jeanette was there two nights ago. You can't hit it any harder than Amarista. Turns into a 4 6 fielder's choice. By the way, the Rockies are up to four quality at bats. There you go. You have to have more quality at bats on the other side, and 12 is typically the number that pushes you towards wins. And here's Hannigan outside on Ryan. Hannigan was behind the plate in John Gray's return to the mound down in Phoenix on Friday. Six foot, 210 pound catcher. So here's the name of the guy it's Josh Barfield. Josh Barfield, is that right? Yep. His dad was, um, was Jesse Barfield. He's playing a winter ball, huh? He's playing winter ball. Where where was he won? In Venezuela. Oh wow. Strike on Hannigan, one and one. And yes, Josh Barfield has dual citizenship. Well unfortunately right now it's a little dicey being in Venezuela. Two and one. Ryan Hannigan grew up in Andover, Massachusetts, before heading down to Orlando to go to school at Rollins. Be 37 later on this summer. Going and it's chopped right back to Feldman. Two outs on Maurice in second, and John Gray will try to help himself out here with two gone. That one three does count as quality at bat. Billy, I, wish, I wish some of these counted for runs. I'm with you on quality at bats. Right now, the Rockies have five quality at bats, but they do not have a run.
Murray looking for his first hit of 2017. It's a lot of zeros. This ball's well hit. Billy Hamilton is looking up. This one's gone. That's a quality at bat. First career home run, John Gray. A two-run shot to dead center, no less. That is where the big boys go. Ow! Wow. In the last game the Rockies won, Jeff Hoffman was on the mound. He came up with two outs, and he said, I'll take care of business, and he doubled to right. John Gray, that's a large fly ball. Well, you're hoping John Gray was just going to get started on the mound. You didn't expect a two-run jack, and he knew it. Billy, that was loud. It's about 15 rows back in center field. I thought we did a terrible job the last two starts of John Gray, just focusing in on this wipeout slider and the upper 90s fastball and what he meant on the mound, and we completely forgot about him at the plate. 105 miles an hour off the bat, 467 feet. Is that what it went 467? Yeah. That makes it one of the longer home runs in baseball this year. I bet you that's top 20. It's got to be the, the hardest hit ball by a pitcher this season. I think Samarja had one earlier this year here at Coors Field where he hit a ball into the visitors' bullpen. But I think this one has it beat. Billy Hamilton took like three steps. He said, that thing's long gone. When a guy in center field quits on the ball, you know you've hit it far. 47th Rockies pitcher to Homer. And of course, earlier this season, Kyle Freeland hit one against the Reds in Cincinnati. Can you John Gray play every day, please? Six quality at bats. You didn't keep track. I'm, I'm, I'm still excited about that. I forgot to make the, the notation. Six quality at bats, first time through the order. Two and two on Charlie, who hit a sharp single to right in the bottom of the first. And this one is hit right at Joey Votto. Feldman covers in the inning after a base hit by Boleka. John Gray with two outs hits a monster home run.
That's a lot of hit. And the big boy just hit one 467 feet. Oh, my. Fans, join in on the conversation. Send us your thoughts, photos, questions. Use Twitter or Instagram. Use the hashtag Toyota Talk. Mark Stout, you have um, a very special guest who I think was very interested in John Gray's at bat, don't you? Indeed. Jacqueline, I saw you get right up out of your seat. Oh, yeah, definitely. Hop two for one of those. That was pretty exciting, and I'm just glad that I was able to be here for that and witness that. So I saw yeah. you sitting here. I'm thinking, does, does she just kind of sit by herself when John pitches? Oh, yeah. Um, there are a lot of game day jitters, and I just get very nervous. So I like to sit by myself and kind of hang out and keep to myself. That way I can stay focused on the game. So They said 467 feet. Yeah, that's that's a long way so but that's really awesome I'm really proud of him that's great this is Jacqueline Gray this is John's wife we also know you because online you're Mrs. Gray oh yes so, yeah. yeah everyone knows things from social media yes yeah all right Jacqueline I just want to say congrats that was exciting and hopefully John continues to pitch well tonight yes thank you so much and thanks to all the fans thank you guys you know what that, that's really neat Mark thank you that's awesome it's that's awesome and She's like, well, she's her, you know, she's his husband, so she gets nervous too. Probably it's easier for John. I bet you felt the same thing when when your parents were at the games and and uh, you were performing. I guarantee you that they were probably more nervous than you were playing, right? I finally experienced that watching my kids play a sport. Not easy. Three and two on Tucker Barnhart. I never understood why my mom or my dad would get so nervous watching a game until I put myself in their shoes and I go, oh, okay, I get it. And a ground ball to the right side. Mark Reynolds tags the bag, one out, that'll bring up Scott Feldman. Dougie, uh, has come up with this. That home run by John Gray is the 14th, tied for the 14th longest in baseball this year. And I'm just guessing, Doug, that the other 13 guys on the list don't have a P next to their name, as in pitcher. Stanton and Judge on there a lot. Looking on that list also. Charlie's is that the longest Rockies home run? Charlie had one 458. Reynolds 458. That's the longest Rockies home run this year. Come on. It is. The longest in baseball is Aaron Judge, 495. Keon Broxton of Milwaukee hit one 489. Big Kenny's Vargas with Minnesota hit one 483. Jake Lamb hit one 481. That was against Tyler Anderson in the Rockies. Longest home run this year for the Rockies, now owned by John Gray. That's a ball. Three and one on Feldman. They can't lose this at bat right here. Feldman's a career 111 major league hitter. That's in over 90 at bats. And that is lined fair. Feldman with a base hit. And I figure. I'd rather it be a base hit than a walk. First hit for the Reds. Scott Feldman, the pitcher, who had. I'm looking at this. Feldman was 0 for 29 this year. A double check. I had him without a hit and I said did I write that down wrong he was 0 for 29. I know what Buddy Black would say. It's baseball. It's baseball. And it hit almost. I mean it, it had to hit the line for it to be a hit. That's line down the right field line but foul. While I was watching Wimbledon this morning and it's really cool what they you know they've had this for years now where you can challenge and they immediately show the picture and if it if the ball touched any part of the line you see it.
One strike on Billy Hamilton. Billy hit a fly ball to center his first time up. Billy, I have no idea what I'm going to look and then I'm going to ask you, how many double plays do you think Billy Hamilton has bounced into this year? A handful. You think that many? He just covered it up. I figured a handful. He, he's had to ground out to first base, so he tags the bag and throws him out in second. Three. This will not be one of them. Oh, get on the bag. Wow. Amarista at five foot six had to jump and catch that and he came down on the bag before Feldman could. So that's the second out. Hamilton at first. This is the only play Nolan had, and again another highlight real play. He's gonna flip it with his glove to Amarista. And that glove, by the way. The one he's been playing with this entire season, he told me today, that's his brother's club. That's no. Uh, that's Jonah's, Jonah's club. club. He found it in the garage this off season. It felt right. Right after a wiffle ball game in the rain. I think there's some baseball equipment in the uh, Arnado's garage. This one fits me pretty good. I'll use this one. Cozart at the plate, one and zero, and it's two and zero. This is the issue that Billy Hamilton brings. You focus on Billy Hamilton, and then all of a sudden you get in an upside-down count with the guy at the plate. So hitting behind Billy probably get a few more fastballs when Billy's on base. Well, until Scooter Jeanette stole a base off John Gray in the second inning, there was no stolen base attempts against Gray this season. One on Cozart with two outs. There goes Hamilton, and the throw to second is not going to get him. So for Billy, his 34th stolen base in 39 attempts. Goes from 0 to 60 so quick. Ooh. Did he come off? Looks like it. It just depends if Amarisa kept the tag on him. A lot of the base stealers wear these oven mitt looking gloves. It's to protect those fingers. Those are the ones that the base stealers like to reach out. Try to touch. See if Amarisa keeps a tag. Three and one on Cozart. Had an old miss. In the air to center field. Charlie's got room. He makes the catch. And we move to the bottom of the third with the Rockies in front, not only behind John Gray's arm, but John Gray's back, two to nothing.
uh, hopefully tonight and uh, a bunch before the All-Star break. They've been uh, overdue for those uh, big outings offensively. You know what the drill is. Make your way to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between 4 and 6 to get your Rockies taco special with Moss and Taco Bell. So we go to the bottom of the third. John Gray's two-run home run. He's given the Rockies that 2 to nothing lead. Rymel Toppy against Scott Feldman. And the curveball's outside. Ball one. With Ryan Spielborgs and Mark Stout. I'm Drew Goodman on a beautiful, warm July 5th. Still 92 degrees in the ballpark. Tapia on one hop to bottom. I'll bring up Nolan Arenado. Nolan struck out his first time. Last night he was two for four. So John Gray hit that ball 467 feet. Remember it hit in the stands and then ricocheted hard right. And there are a couple of security folks who are hunting for the baseball, and we think, we're not sure if this is it, because it could have been a, a ball from batting practice, but there was a baseball in the water there. This ball is on the ground short. Two outs. He's trying to get that baseball naturally for John, his first career home run. Might be waterlogged. They haven't seen that one. You want me to go get it? You'll be back by the seventh inning. Go ahead. They, I think from their angle, honestly, they can't see that. You know, it's a little rock. Cargo at the plate. He walked his first time up. He's got a 1 0 count. Three on the right side against Carlos. One other note on John Gray's 467 foot home run. Longest of pitchers hit this year, tied for 14th longest in the big leagues this season. As we said, the longest by a Rockies player this year. It's the longest by a pitcher in the StatCast era. The one who had it previously was Jeff Samarja here, June 17th, and that one was 446 feet. Now, the StatCast era has only been around since 2015. It's an era, though. It's an era. Feldman taking a lot of time. Cargo back out. 317 career average against the Reds with damage. I like what he told Mark Stout this afternoon. He's wiping the slate clean, which mentally is the right thing to do. He came off the disabled list. Just, I mean, you can't change history, right? Just move forward. Last night, a couple of hits. And foul tips held. A one, two, three, third inning by Feldman. Rockies up 2 0. As we good. go to the fourth, this ball's still lying there. Somebody will find it.
Oh, on Root Sports is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. And by the Wyoming Office of Tourism, Wyoming is full of adventure. It's time to find out if you are too. That's why TravelWyoming.com. I would have given anything if Rizal Iglesias, that's a red relief pitcher, if you would have pushed Mike Ponarelli into the water. You know, when, when the mission becomes really serious, they summon Tiny. Tiny has fouled the baseball that we were looking at as Votto fouls this off. We're not sure if that was the baseball, though. I mean, that would have been the best prank ever if, if Iglesias just shoved, Tiny shoved in. him in. Votto hit a fly ball to left his first time up. Pass that on to Tiny. Rat you out. 97 misses on the inside corner. Two and one. I mean, there's times in life where you know it's not the right thing to do, but for the laugh, it would have been worth it. Right, for the entertainment of others. Yes. And that's how you explain it. I didn't want to do it, but I felt like it would be entertaining for everybody else around, so you had to take one for the team. There are two balls under the rocks in the water, another to the. <laughs> that, people are helping. It's like the X Files. Push him in. Tiny, Tiny needs to grab the hand of somebody so he doesn't fall in. Three and two. On Votto. Oh, yeah, Jerry Votto's hit. Oh, there's another baseball. Hold on to his foot. If Tiny goes swimming here, I'm going to lose it. Please fall in. Line drive deep left, going back, Tapia. Can't make the catch. Blackman's going to have to help out, and Votto is going to try to go to third. Throw on its way, won't get it. Leadoff triple for Joey Votto. How tough is this when you have to make a decision? Can I make the play or do I just field it off the wall and, and take the double? These are the do or die plays that an outfielder has to make. And for an outfielder on a play like that, your best bet is to run as hard as you can to try to make up ground so you can actually slow down right before you get to the wall. Tapia was, was coasting a bit as that ball was hit. At the knees, a strike on Scooter Jeanette. It's the first triple of the year for Votto. Just his 17th career triple. And that's a base hit, and it's two to one. Boy, Scooter Jeanette. Has really hurt a lot of teams this year, but he's hurt the Rockies. He is eight for 13 against Colorado this season. This is RBI number 46 for Jeanette. Just able to poke it past Nolan. base in the National League. Suarez at the plate. He struck out his first time up. Two and up. Oh. 
Jeanette stole a base just a second of the year in the second inning when he reached on an error by Baleka. Gray pitched out of that situation. Kerwin Danley says that's a strike two and one. Jeanette's got 26 RBIs in his last 24 games. Including that 10 RBI and four homer game. Suarez is a double play candidate tied for the team lead with eight. Two and two. From Venezuela. So many Venezuelans he makes in baseball. He makes his home in Florida, the Miami area in the offseason. Used to play in Caracas winter ball with uh, an old friend of yours and uh, my favorite all time Rockies, your Victoria Alba. I miss your beat. I haven't seen. Your feet in a long time. Probably been four or five years since I, I last saw him. Do you know what he's up to? He's raising his son down in, in Florida. He's a guy that I hope at some point, if he wants, gets back in the game. He'd be a great mentor, great coach for young players. Three and two now on Suarez. I'm sure Jeanette will be in motion again here. In motion when Suarez was at the plate in the second, and that's when he swiped second base on the strikeout. There he goes, and that's ball four. Matt Johns created a little bit of an issue here the triple, the base hit, and a walk. Rockies have a two to one lead, but the Reds have two on and nobody out. Big Scott Shevler coming up. Great group party options are available on the rooftop. The rooftop has different areas that people can that can accommodate people of groups of over 40 to 300. Call 303 Rockies for availability. Shebler should be two. Good pickup. And an easy throw to first by Baleka. The whole key was that pickup by Amarista. That ball was hit sharply. And it's a 4 6 3 double play to third base goes Jeanette. Amarista, the ball's rattling around in his glove a bit. Ball's hit so hard. Finds it quickly and then gives a good feed to Baleka, who understands he still has enough time to make a quality throw to first. Rockies with 92 double plays tied for first in Major League Baseball. And now again, same situation as he faced in the second inning with a runner in scoring position and two outs. John Gray will try to get Jose Peraza. He got him on a ground ball to Reynolds in the second. Double plays the Milwaukee Brewers. And 
strike two. Set up that disappearing slider. Well, Peraza this season, 300 at bats, 46 strikeouts. He's not prone to the strikeout. He will shorten up the swing and just try to put the ball in play. Fouled off. Last night, Peraza was able to beat Kyle Freeland inside on a two strike cutter up and in. Two high, one and two. Pitch count at 68. Not alarmingly high if he could put this inning down right here. Most pitchers, you have average per innings right around 17. You mean that 15 range, you really give yourself an opportunity to pitch late into a ball game. And the Rockies need that. Bullpen's a little unsettled these days on the plus side. Two to one, Colorado. Peraza being a nuisance at the plate. Him up, foul ground. Nolan on the warning track in front of the Reds dugout makes the catch. A triple by Votto, a base hit by Jeanette, and the Reds have their first run. It's two to one, Colorado, middle of four at Coors Field. There's another baseball. Hey, if you uh, if you can't notice, Mark Reynolds is up to bat. This may be a first for me on TV with uh, <laughs> with being like Mark. All right, Ash like Mark. Ashley's the ringleader. And this is the All Star ambassadors, basically for the uh, Rockies. The ringleader. All yeah. Right, so Ashley, tell everybody they've got till tomorrow to vote, right? You have till tomorrow, 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're the Yankees fans and you're helping us out, Sir DD for sure. 
But for Be Like Mark, 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, tomorrow is the hashtag, Be Like Mark. Text whatever you want, gifts, pictures, I don't care. Okay. Make it, retweet, go to the Rockies and retweet everything. Hey, Mark Reynolds got a hit. That's our guy! Woo! <laughs> All right, so what do you got, 10 people out here? Yeah, there's, well, probably more. We've got a bunch of people. So be like Mark, hold on. Into the, yeah, I'm, I'm, what's up? Stout, take a look at the be like Mark made for each other poster right next to you. That's professionally done. Yeah, that's Titanic style is with that Mark Titanic? Reynolds. Yeah. This is the Titanic, this is Mark, and the All-Star Game, they were made for each other. That's pretty good, right, Spilly? <laughs> I love it. You guys are great. All right. Thanks for the effort. Hopefully he gets in. All right, Thanks, I, I hope so. Thank you. All right. They're, Mark's on first, guys. Be like Mark, they're awesome. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Mark with an awesome base hit. So with uh, nobody out, Valake at the plate, he takes a strike. Pat had a base hit to center. The Rockies this evening with four hits, three singles, and the home run by John Gray. So they have 14 hits their last uh, game in a third, 13 singles, and John Gray's 467 foot home run. One and one. Only kind of dropped down there and threw that curveball. Patty Barrels, big star at UCLA, he was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. He led UCLA to a College World Series title, back cleanup for them. This ball is in the air, deep right center field. Shebler on the move, Shebler looking up, it's gone. Two run, home run. Four to one, Colorado. Vallejo with his sixth of the year. Keep adding the quality of bats tonight for Patty Barrels. Sixth home run of the season. Add two more RBIs as well. Make that 16 for a guy that doesn't get at all opportunities. And when he does get them, he makes the most of it. Middle lower third of the lineup producing tonight. We were discussing earlier, Spilly, the pressure that you know the Blackmans and the Nolans have to feel to produce with the club struggling offensively. And tonight it's John Gray of all people, and then a spot start for Pat Valake. He's two for two, including that a little swing of the bat. One and one on Amarista. He hit the ball on the butt his first time up. Went off the glove of a leaping Jose Peraza and he was able to get a force out at second. Two and one on Amarista. You know what I like, Spilly? Really like home runs with people on base. Cricket numbers are the best. Three and one. Owen Danley flinched for a moment. What's the count right now? Eight quality at bats so far? Eight Q at bats, yeah. They're on their way. That's great. Now, Pat won't brag about it, so I'll do it for him. Oftentimes, a lot of these pitchers, John Gray, Tyler Anderson, before he had the, the knee scoped, and yesterday, Chad Bettis. Well, usually it's the guys coming off the bench will have to face these pitchers in live BP. And Valeka in live BP has been beating up on his teammates. He had, took, he, he listened, Bettis threw the ball really well yesterday, but Valeka hit one in the seats against him. Hit one in the seats, took John Gray deep. Had a couple of hits in Pittsburgh with no defense, but that's okay. He counts. He's allowed to practice. On the ground to Cozart, and that's the first out. 
here in the fourth inning for the Rockies. It'll bring up Ryan Hannigan. Hannigan hit one back to Feldman his first time. Curveballs dropped in there for a strike. Hannigan never worked with Feldman. Feldman last year pitched with Houston and Toronto. Scott's been in the postseason. He's been all the way to the World Series with the Rangers in 2011. Worked at the bullpen for Texas in that postseason. One and two. Four strikeout. Listen to the applause for John Gray. Yeah. I love it. John Gray still has the hardest hit ball tonight. 105 miles an hour off the bat. Landed in the Platte River. You know what's wild? I'm looking at that swing, Spilly. The first swing that he took that he fouled off in his first at bat. He had a big leg lift. The one he hit out, toe he tap. Got, yeah, he got rid of the uh, leg lift. And Barry Bonds toe tap. Yeah, there it is. Toe oh. tap. It, how hard is that to change your timing mechanism in mid at bat? <laughs> what do you got for me? You can do it. I mean, guys, we see Buster Posey do it all the time. Guys are. Somebody with a leg kick, trying to shorten it up. Well, that was a hanger. John almost punished also, one and two. Some guys, Albert Poole just kind of toes up a little bit. He is massively strong, though. One, two. I got one for you. I've been meaning to say this to you. Remind me next inning, all right? You love studying hitters. Outside, two and two. Gray's forcing Feldman to work. 78th pitch for Feldman. Rockies up four to one. That's strike three. That'll end the inning, but Reynolds began it with a sharp single to the left. And then Pat Baleka into the Rockies bullpen, his sixth home run.
Pascal Arms cast your boat, and we'll show you the results on the Toyota Post Game Show. So it's been announced, the 2017 Home Run Derby bracket on Monday night in Miami. And Charlie Blackman has drawn the precocious rookie, Cody Bellinger of the Los Angeles Dodgers in round one. So we want to know, who do you think is going to win? Got to go with uh, Chuck Nasty, right? Got it, right? Well, the hometown folks. Bellinger's been a freak show, though, hasn't he? Incredible to watch. Both guys. Well, earlier today, Charlie Blackman practicing for the home run derby. It's in slow motion. My camera's pretty sweet. That's Darren Holmes, who's going to be Charlie Blackman's personal BP thrower for the home run derby. And he wanted to work on what it feels like to hit without the turtle, without the cage above him. I think if you talk to guys that have participated in the home run derby, that's the strangest feeling, is taking batting practice without the cage around you. That is a weird deal, isn't it, for hitters? It really is. I don't know why. It, it just, it just is. I, it just seems like everything's tight when you're, you know, with the turtle, and, and, you, and there's a comfort level, knowing everything's dark around you, and it seems like you see the baseball, you take that away, and there's a catcher behind you. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. I think that's smart of Charlie, though, to do it. Got to practice it, but that's so Charlie, isn't it? It, he, did, he did what the rules were. I think it was like a five minute round. He took one five minute round to just see what it would feel like. So he had an idea of, or is it three minutes? Oh, well, I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's the, the way the format is now. It's three or five minutes for a round. Ooh. And you get as many swings as you want. How'd he do? He did great. That's why I'm picking Charlie. Two and two on Tucker Barnhart. Out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Tucker went to Brownsburg High School in Indianapolis. We're, we're on to high schools today, right? Santa Barbara High. How many guys did you produce? Eight? Eight. Sarasota, 17. That is strike three. As he walks off, we'll tell you that Brownsburg has produced Tucker Barnhart, Drew Story, right? And also Lance Lynn. Pretty good high school baseball program, huh? Very good. Okay, you I was going to ask you, we could do this because Feldman's at the plate, and he was 0 for 29, he got a base hit. So he's not getting another hit for another month. Okay. You are really big on studying swings. Look at this, that's a tough chance for Nolan. Comes up with it. Feldman's out, two outs. I find the approach of a guy we see quite a bit, Justin Turner, who's in the final five along with Mark Reynolds, very unique because he charges the baseball. Big leg kick, and, and you've explained how, how much work he did a few years ago after he left the Mets. It was with Marlon Bird. With Marlon Bird, is now retired. And I'm watching another guy who I know you love to watch, and Tulo, your good buddy, loves to watch, and now his teammate, Josh Donaldson. When you watch from the side, that's the same look and swing, isn't it? Same thing there, and it's the leg kick trying to get yourself gathered up. Now, where they take it a step further, is they look at the front foot. They want the front foot to land where the toes are facing the pitcher. And so basically what this creates is you think about a rubber band, you'll hear Josh Donaldson talk about stretching out a rubber band. That's what the leg kick and their body's trying to do is stretch as far as they can because they realize that it'll pick up bat speed, creates a whip. Op it opens the hips too, doesn't opens it? Opens the hips. So if you watch these guys, notice how their front hip will be open, but their hands stay back. That gives that elastic feeling like a bow and arrow. Billy Hamilton lines this to center, and it's a base hit. Billy has swung the bat well in this series. Did not play on Monday, but two hits last night. He's one for three. He reached on a fielder's choice in the third and stole second. But I was thinking about that. I was watching Toronto play the other day. They were on early in the day, and they showed his swing from the side. And I'm like, that's Justin Turner. Because we don't get to see Donaldson as much. 
big time. leg kick and he charges yeah. I mean, he transfers his weight and on weights his backside two pretty good hitters very very good but you have to have your timing spot on so Billy Hamilton 34 stolen bases at first can you name Billy the last redder or you folks at home just tweet us it tweet us the answer the last red to lead the National League in stolen bases good pick up by Reynolds well, I know it wasn't Billy Hamilton last year because that was Jonathan VR if Billy was leading each of the last two September's he got hurt in 15 in early September got hurt last year in early September and couldn't play the rest of the year and unfortunately for Billy he got passed up and this year Billy doesn't lead the National League it's Trey Turner here goes Hamilton and it's on the ground to short Oleka works his way through it and that's all for the Reds in the fifth so who is the last Red to lead the National League in stolen bases Oleka two run home run the Rockies up four to one Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. It would have been sweet if they put up like Sport big Root. eyebrows for Root Sports Root Rock. Root Sports Rock Spilly. I like that. Or Root Sports Socks. Right. Uh, what do you Spilly? think? Your sock game, you've always been one of those tube sock, white tube sock guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Uh, it's your influence on me. I love you like these? Got purple in here for yeah, the Rockies. I and I like yours. Got some pink for breast cancer awareness. Yeah, it's Both nice. got them going. Nice I like that. You're switching it up. You got to work on those shoes, dude. Where did you get those shoes? Like in your second year in the big leagues? High school. Charlie Blackman, he hits leadoff for the Rockies. He's really good. Or as Charlie would say, he's a, he's a good baseball player. He wouldn't say that about himself. He'd say that about other people. Typically self-deprecating. Charlie a single in the first and a ground out in the second inning. I'm excited for Charlie in the home run derby. We had the question yesterday, who is the last leadoff hitter to participate in the home run derby? And it came back to Grace Sizemore. And then before that, I thought Brady Anderson, and it was. Brady Anderson did participate in two home run derbies. It's been a while. It has been a while. One, two. And did Charlie go? I believe he did. So Scott Feldman starting to rack up the strikeouts. That has been a problem for the Rockies offense lately. A lot of empty at bats. That's six strikeouts for Feldman, three in a row. 
bring up Rymel Tapia sacrifice and a ground ball to Botto. Last 13 games, the Rockies have been outscored by 50 runs. And this is Loop to Kozar, two outs. All right, I'm going to drop some numbers on you on 50 run run differential during a 13 game stretch. The 93 team month of May, you could put it every single 13 game stretch in the month of May would have been over 50 point run differential. 61 was the record in May. 1999, there's a 13 game stretch, 54 run differential. That's how many the Rockies were down, and then it goes to 2015, which ties up the current streak right now of 50, being outscored by 50. Doesn't happen too often. No. It's an ugly stretch. The Rockies desperately want to put in their rear view mirror. Nolan a strikeout and a ground ball to short. Rockies hit two home runs tonight. Two run shot by John Gray and a two run shot by Pat Faleka. If you missed it, the ball Gray hit. He hit about 15 rows up to center field, 467 feet, the 14th longest home run in baseball this year, the longest by a Rocky, the longest ever by a pitcher in the three years of the Statcast era. One on Arenado. I'm going to get some of your guesses on the last red to lead the league in stolen bases. Three and one. All right, Barry Larkin or Deion Sanders. Cookie Monster, you can't get two guesses, but we allowed you. Spencer Smith, stand up and take a bow. In 1970, he cheated. So everybody can cheat now. We don't know if you did, Spencer. We're going to assume you did, but nice job. Bobby Tolan back in 1970 with 57 bags led the National League. 4 1 Colorado as we go to the sixth. Play. What a play. Nolan grabs it to second. He gets the out. How about that play? It's a tough play for Nolan, and he'll still get the out. Why? Because he's Nolan. Are you kidding me, folks? That guy at third's really good, isn't he? One of my favorite lines Nolan being Nolan, right? You got to be like Mark this year. And for half a decade, Nolan being Nolan. Well, Joey Votto's at the plate. Is one of the toughest outs in baseball. That is a fair ball knocked down by Reynolds, safe at first. Mark's upset with himself that he didn't pick that cleanly going to his left. He's 
caught him up on that heel. See where it hits the palm on the Subaru Supermo. Does a good job of recovering, but John Gray, not really an opportunity to stay on the bag with that toss. So that'll bring up Scooter Jeanette. Single did a run in the fourth. Reached on error by Valenka in the second. That will be a hit for Votto. Have turned one double play in the game. Corner strike one and one. John struck out ten uh, against the Diamondbacks. Hasn't produced a big number of strikeouts tonight, but there have been a lot of balls hit hard. On three strikeouts for Big John this evening. Two and one. The red strengths this year, their offense obviously, and their defense has been good. They have a poor record, 36 and 47. They're pitching. Their starting pitching has been the worst in baseball, and they've given up more home runs than any team in baseball. Brian Price, former pitching coach. Jim Riggleman, former manager. Riggleman, the bench coach for Brian Price. Two and two, it remains. We were talking the other day, Spilly. I don't know if it was me and Huey or me and you about managers that throw BP because Buddy Black throws BP regularly and he works every day one on one inside with Charlie Blackman. Brian Price will throw BP yesterday in particular because they were facing Kyle Freeland, a lefty, and Brian's left handed. He threw to the first group out on the field. Two two and that's a base hit. And Votto's going to go first to third. Cargo's throw it was on line. Votto just did get there. And now two are on and nobody out. Pitch count is at 90. Jeanette continues to beat up on the Rockies pitching. Joey Votto. Never even picking up third base coach Billy Hatcher is going on his own. Steve Foster will come out. So it's seven quality at bats now for the Cincinnati Reds compared to the Rockies eight. And you can see how this battle of offenses works out. Reds have actually out hit the Rockies six to five. But the Rockies, unlike last night when they had 10 singles, and the Reds had 10 hits, but they had a lot of multiple, excuse me, extra base hits, including three home runs. The Rockies have the home runs tonight. That's why they're up four to one. But John's got to empty the tank here. There's two guys in the Rockies bullpen, Chris Russin and Scott Ober. In a perfect world. Which it rarely is for a manager. We want John to get through six, and then a combination of those two in the bullpen, maybe in the seventh, onto Jake McGee, and this is a base hit. Now it's four to two, and then Greg Holland. But first things first. You now the tying run at first base. Three little singles. Suarez drives in a run, and at the plate. 
guy with tremendous power Scott Shevler he's got 21 home runs. Broken bat single just punched into right field. And you look at this inning the last three singles have not been hit hard at all. Three strikeouts for John tonight. This is one of those situations where he'd love to get the punch out. Shebler has the highest of respect for John Gray. He faced him when he was with the Dodgers coming up. He was telling me before the ball game, he says. This guy's really tough to hit. Strikeout by Shevler and hit into a 4 6 3 double play. Hit that ball hard though, but it was at Amarista. Takes ball one. Shevler's had a great season this year 21 home runs, but what's more impressive to me, less than 20% strikeout rate. He's at 19%. He puts the ball in play a lot. this a little bit tonight even though John's only given up a couple of runs to this point he's been behind in some counts you mentioned the low Lower strikeout rate, below the league average of 21% for a power guy like Shebler. That's a strike. His average coming in just 255. And for those that like advanced metrics, his Babbitt, batted balls in play, is 251. The league average is right around 300, which you know, tells you that he's hitting some hard luck. Drew, you mentioned John has been behind in the count for several of bats, 14 of 24 first pitch strikes. I'd like to get that first pitch strike number up to about 19 out of 24. I'd like it at least over 70%. Look, we, we were talking about that with Granke over the weekend. Highest in baseball. Kershaw typically way up there. Two two. Jose Peraz on deck. A run in for Cincinnati. Three straight singles. It's four to two Colorado. Shepler showed a lot of promise in the Dodgers organization. In high A, he hit 27 home runs, drove in 95 the next year in double A. It's always that uh, demarcation point kind of separates, as they say, in pro ball the men from the boys, the guys that truly become prospects. He backed it up by hitting 28 home runs, driving in 82. Reached the big leagues with LA for. 40 plate appearances in 2015. Three home runs. It's 
Two and two on Shebler. 98 pitch up coming. When you look at this Reds offense, what makes them special is that they have pop. They can hit the ball out of the yard, but they also don't strike out a ton. Joey Votto, best on the team, 11% strikeout percentage, but you start looking at the next batters, Peraza, 14%, Barnhart, 15%. It's been difficult for John to get the punch out tonight, only three. And so we've seen him several times in today's game with two strikes. He cannot put a Reds hitter away. 3 2. And he got the strike out there. That is big. One out. John went to the changeup on this pitch. Got away with one. It, it is center cut. But the variance in. Velocity was all he needed. Peraza, ground out, foul out. Strike one. Ariel Hernandez, who just returned to the big leagues from Louisville today, is up in the Cincinnati bullpen. Right field line is foul ball. It's in the seats. 102 pitches was a season high for John Gray, the last start against the Diamondbacks. Sixth inning, Rockies up four to two. 0 and two on Peraza. They want this uh, pitch up. Freddie Benavides on the coaching lines at first, and yes, the same uh, Freddie Benavides who was with the Rockies back in their inaugural season of 1993. Another one of those lifers. Love those guys. Yeah. Two on, another 0 2 pitch upcoming with one out. You see, Peraza's wasting good pitches. Nice catch. And John's missing his spot by a, a couple inches. Hannigan won that pitch more inside. Mislocation, miss middle again. Doesn't have the wipeout slider tonight. The pitch that I thought was a changeup to Shebler was a slider. It was just spinning. I've heard you guys say many times, Billy, there's there's no defense really when you're at the plate for the backup slider. It does what it's not supposed to do. And there's a strikeout on a 96 mile an hour fastball. He said John Gray's got to empty the tank. He's two thirds of the way there. It's a big strikeout. Peraza is very difficult to strike out. Look at where the location where Hannigan wants it. Miss location, but it's a perfectly located pitch if you're going to miss. That super super mo. Another scrappy guy at the plate, Tucker Barnhart. Ground out, strikeout. Does help out that. Amarista can move out of double play depth and give himself more range out on the outfield grass a step. As I'm watching Raimel Tapia in left field, two outs 
with runner at second, left-handed hitter, you might want to start seeing him creep in, getting a little more shallow. Barnhart's not going to hit it over your head. You we're burned earlier with Joey Votto, but you'd like to see him somewhere around here. Give yourself an opportunity to throw somebody out. Jeanette at second. Suarez at first. Two outs are running for Cincinnati. It's 2-0. Conventional wisdom will say, Spilly, there's a runner. The tying runs at first. You don't want to double hit over your head. And that's true. But when you're watching a guy like John Gray pitch and understand that if he gets beat, you don't want him to get beat with the ball in front of you. A weak contact. 2-0. And that's off the plate. You want Barnhart here. I know he's a left-handed batter. On deck is out of Duval. Big time pop. He's going to pinch hit if the inning is extended. Duval's Brian Price's big threat off the bench today. He's normally the starter in left field. Price, managers will do this. They, it's not always just use them in the ninth inning. They're going to pick their spot. Obviously, if he comes up with the bases loaded, that would be the spot. Even in the sixth, he wants to use him. Here's a base hit. Cargo he is throwing it to the plate, and he will freeze Jeanette. So Duval will come up with the bases loaded. And now decision for Buddy Black. 107 pitches. Do you want Gray facing him, or do you want Oberg facing him? But he wants Scott Oberg the fresh arm. So John Gray gives up that base hit to Barnhart after falling behind. And he's going to hand the baseball to his manager, who when we come back will hand it to Scott Oberg. Bases loaded for Cincinnati. Rockies up 4-2 in the sixth. Hit one. Pat Belake has hit one. And now John, after 107 pitches, could not get that final out in the sixth inning. The bases are full of reds. Four singles in the inning have produced a run. And Scott Oberg will try to get the pinch hitter, Adam Duvall. It's been about three days since Oberg last pitch. His arm should be fresh. We still saw him touch 100 at Dodger Stadium a little bit over a week ago. He went, he went 100 and then 101. Scooter Jeanette is at third at second base. Suarez, he drove in a run with a kind of punch single to right. And just a moment ago, Tucker Barnhart with a line drive to right. Eight hits against John Gray, seven singles, the Joey Votto triple. So a dangerous man at the plate. 
Big strong Adam Duvall. And he takes strike one. Duvall hitting 279, 19 home runs. He's driven in 59. He has 24 doubles. He's got a slugging percentage of 555. All star a year ago for Cincinnati. It's his second pinch hit of the season. And a ground ball to Nolan. He bobbles, and he doesn't have anybody. Wow. The guy you wanted hit to, and now it's four to three. Just the second error this year. For third error for Nolan. Well, that has to be something rare to happen if Nolan makes an error. Just missed it. And that's, you know, for Nolan, a real easy play. He had options, too. He'd get the force in second. Now you have Billy Hamilton. You got to deal with his speed. One run game. And also, from a pitcher standpoint, you got to, you, know, you, you think you made a pitch and you got out of the inning, and now you have to refocus. Hamilton's swing the bat well the last two nights, three hits. And this is going to be a tough play. Amarista just got great play by Amarista, and the Rockies will cling to a one run lead going to the bottom of the sixth. Break brought to you by T Mobile. Some news and notes around Major League Baseball. Aaron Judge hit home run number 29 today. That already ties Joe DiMaggio's Yankee rookie record. Something tells me he will break that since he's got a few more games left in 2017. Clayton Kershaw, last 12 starts. Is this any good? Dodgers as a team 12 0. He has an ERA of 198. And Mike Trout is close to returning. He's going to make his first uh, rehab start for Inland Empire. Uh, tonight. 4 3 Rockies. They had a 4 1 lead. See if they can get the offense going again. They are going to face Ariel Hernandez, who made his major league debut back in late April. He's been uh, at two different levels this year double A AA and triple A besides the big leagues. Called back today when Devin Mezzarocco went on the disabled list. So he'll get cargo. Mark Reynolds and Pat Faleka in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Rockies up a run, but they've been out hit eight to five. Cargo a walk and a strikeout. 
big arm as so many young kids coming out of the bullpen have these it days. Shouldn't surprise you. I mean, that's that's basically our scouting report for everybody coming out of the bullpen. Big arm, slider. Two ninety sevens, and it's a one one count on Gonzalez. Crowd of thirty two thousand one eighty eight tonight. So side note, since we were mentioned talking about Clayton Kershaw, Kershaw is starting Sunday for the Dodgers, which means he won't be available for the All-Star game. And Alex Wood is throwing tonight for the Dodgers against the Diamondbacks. Most likely would be the replacement. It's a good matchup. That Arizona LA series tonight. It's Alex Wood against Zach Dodd. Dodgers have the early lead. Shock of shots. One nothing. One two. Pretty good slider there. Good location. This is what's made baseball so difficult. We see the home run numbers spike. We see the strikeout numbers spike. First opportunity to catch Ariel Hernandez. He gets called up for the minor leagues. He's throwing 97 miles an hour with the slider. For a hitter that never faced this guy before, the advantage goes towards the pitcher. And a ground ball right into the shift. One out. One of the things you've noticed this year, and there's stats to back it up, two of the Rockies, middle of the order guys, have hit an inordinately high amount of ground balls, Cargo being one, Ian Desmond being the other. Usually this, this, yeah, and this this year we're more than at any time in the recent past. And we talked about launch angle. Reynolds a sharp single his last time up, and he came around on the Valleca two-run homer. Rockies offense has come in the lower portion of the lineup. John Gray, a two-run home run of all people, and Valleca's two-run home run. Pat's hit sixth. One and one. Scott Feldman went five innings. He allowed four runs. All of them earned five hits, a couple of home runs. He walked just one. He struck out six. He did retire the final six hitters he faced. John Gray goes five and two thirds, allows three runs, two earned. Eight hits, a walk, five strikeouts. Jake McGee is up in the Rockies pen. Excuse me, Chris Russin is up. Chris was up a moment ago. In next inning, it's Cozart, Votto, and Jeanette. So, got to figure Cozart will get Oberg, and then Russin will be asked to get the two left handed hitters. And then in the eighth inning, things stay the way they are. It'll be Jake McGee. 2-2 on Reynolds, one out, nobody on. And that's uh, eight straight Rockies retired. And that's a combined seven strikeouts in five and two-thirds innings for the Rockies offense. The first 10,000 fans next Sunday will receive a military appreciation barbecue apron courtesy of the Colorado Beef Council. Sometimes you shake things up as a manager and you're able to push the right buttons. Valleca getting the start for the struggling Trevor Story. He's got a single and a home run and a deep drive to center that'll land in the glove of Billy Hamilton. So Ariel Hernandez has a 1 2 3 6. We move to the 7th 4 3 Colorado.
about a pitching performance, John Gray tonight. We told you the line, five and two thirds, two earned runs. A walk five strikeouts, pitching without that real sharp slider of his. Through 107 pitches this evening. He's on the plus side. We go to the seventh. It'll be Zach Cozart, Joey Votto, Scooter Jeanette. Hoberg got the final out of the sixth inning. Cozart's 0 for 3. And he takes strike one. Left center field, and this is a gapper. That'll be a leadoff double for Zach Cozart, tying run at second. This has been a problem inning all year for the Rockies, the seventh inning. They've allowed 63 runs in the seventh, the most runs they've allowed in any inning. And now you got Joey Votto coming up. It's just been a fist fight lately. The last two weeks, you can't, it's even in the, the couple of victories the Rockies have had, they've been a struggle. They have not had that clean, dominant game in all facets. They certainly haven't had a laugher in a while where it's, a, you know, an early blowout. Everything has been a struggle. Quote from Joey Votto, think of me as the Canadian Ichiro. This is in reference to the home run derby because everybody said that if Ichiro wanted to, he could hit home runs at will. And people say the same thing about Joey Votto. He is not going to be in the home run derby. He is deferred as he steps to the plate. And Drew, I know you got a chance to talk to him. And he has the utmost respect for Ichiro and the way that he approaches hitting and approaches the plate. But both of them can hit homers if they really wanted to. Uh, both of them could do anything they want on a baseball field, and that's a, a magic wand in the hands of Ichiro and Joey Votto. And they kind of mark each played a little practical joke on one another this year. When Votto went to uh, Miami, Ichiro left him a bunch of donuts in his uh, locker. Ball one from Russin, and uh, a little bit later on. Joey reciprocated by leaving 51 pizzas, sending out for 51, his number right, Ichiro's 51, to the uh, Marlins clubhouse. Rustin trying to get Votto right now. Nobody out. Cozart at second. And that's a strike. Well, Chris Rustin has been asked to do a lot of different things by Bud Black. He's had a fantastic year. That opponent averaged below 200. Joey Votto has faced Russin 13 times, 3 for 13 against Chris. Oh. 
two and one. The Rockies still have the lead four three but the opportunities for Cincinnati to pile on three for twelve tonight with runners in scoring position the Rockies are only one out of three that comes down is it the John Gray home run three and one. Four. So Votto walks. Yeah, potential good that comes out of that is you have a double play opportunity. Scooter Jeanette coming up. So as we mentioned earlier, if you were following at home with the quality at bats, Rockies needing 12. That's usually the good number. Or at least have more the, than the opposition. Eight for the Rockies. 11 now for the Reds. They had eight after three plus innings first two guys in the fourth reached Reynolds a base hit Baleka a home run you had eight at that point they have not had any since and look where the baseball game is Jeanette has given the Rockies fits this year it's a ball tonight two for three and the only time the Rockies I put this in quotations got him out he actually reached on an error by Baleka hit a home run in each of the first two ball games of this series. Going through a really difficult stretch. The pitching hasn't been sharp. The offense hasn't been sharp. Tonight, the defense had two errors for the Rockies. And one of the errors cost the Rockies a run when Nolan, who's the best glove man in baseball, booted a ground ball. It would have kept the Rockies ahead by two runs. Get it, Spilly. You played a lot of seasons in the big leagues, and this is the time of year when you're fatigued mentally, physically. You're looking ahead to that break, but so is everybody else, and, and nobody in that Rockies clubhouse is going to use that as an excuse. Of course not. Sends it and Jake McGee warming up in the Rockies bullpen. I do think, though, people don't maybe give enough credit or point out enough. Altitude can wear a team out pretty quickly. We've seen it when other teams come here for an extended stretch. Jeanette chases one out. Big strikeout by Russin. Jeanette was pleading his case that he foul tipped this ball in the dirt. See how Buddy plays this. You have Suarez coming up. And then you have Shebler. Shebler's killed lefties. Here's Senzatella warming. Last outing, six up, six set down by Senzatella out of the pen. It's going to be Russ in here. Suarez. One for two and a walk. Singled in a run last inning. Strike one. And in the smaller sample size, Suarez hits better against lefties than righties, but this is also the same time where you're trusting, Bud trust Russell. He's putting up his guy against Suarez because he's out of the guys in the bullpen of late, Russell has been pretty countable. It's still kind of an unfamiliar situation. That's down for Senzatella. As good a stuff as Senzatella has, and as tough minded as the young man is, he hasn't, he's been a starting pitcher his whole career. He's never been asked, all right, man, come in with a little bit of a traffic jam in a one run game. 
He may be asked to do that coming up here, but not as of yet. Makes him so special. He has a cutter he can throw in the right handers with the great changeup that he can throw away to righty. So it, it puts it puts a hitter on edge because he's thinking maybe I have to cheat to get to the fastball in to the cutter in. But then you have to respect the changeup. And he's so good at changing timing. Go to a short stride. Just missed. See, Hannigan wanted that pitch, but it was outside on the Subaru strike zone. Two and two on Suarez. Cozart's at second, a leadoff double. Bono walked. Ready to make sure that his uh, two options in the bullpen are ready. He's needed a box of tums the last couple of weeks. Ground ball to third. To the bag and on the first double play, end of inning. Well done, Chris Russell. Middle seven, Rockies by a run. Behind home plate as we go bottom seven, rocks up. Great play from Nolan Arenado. Had a chance to talk to Greg Holland today. Don't hear from him much, but I asked him when did he know that he joined a good baseball team? About the third day of spring training. Yeah. Why? You see all the athleticism in the outfield and the infield. Um, you know, you see Nolan on TV, but it's not the same when you get to see him live. Uh, DJ is the same way. And, just around the horn, I, I saw us taking infield the first day, and I was blown away. Defense, that's what a pitcher wants, and that's the defense that the Rockies got in the last half inning. Hopefully, we'll see Greg Holland tonight, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Players know. It's why DJ's an all-star. Players know. 1-0 on Amarista. 2-0. Second inning of work for Ariel Hernandez. He's 0 for 2. Trying to get the Rockies some additional runs. It's been 
nine straight retired ever since Malika's home run in the fourth inning. Last time the Rockies scored seven runs in a game. He's talking about tacos. For a while it was a regular occurrence, but it's been since June 18th when they beat the Giants seven to five. That was during a little six game winning streak. 2 1 on Amarista. Two balls, two strikes on Alexi. It is amazing to me, I mean, not to bring up bad with more bad, but since June the 20th, and that was when they won the sixth straight, they were 47 and 26. Since that time frame, and losing 11 out of 13, he dropped to 49 and 37. And as we mentioned earlier, getting outscored by over 50 runs. And Amarista strikes out. The, the great news, though, is that in the past, these last several years, if the Rockies went on that kind of stretch, which a lot of teams do, we've pointed that out. Every yeah. team has their difficult stretch, and you hope the Rockies can put it to bed and move on. And then when you look back on 2017, this was it. But in the past, the Rockies were maybe around 500 when that bad stretch happened. And then and then you're 8, 9, 10, 11 games under 500. It's tough to recover from that. The Rockies had built so much bank because they are a good team. I'm just trying to get back to playing good baseball and good health. Para last night, by the way, played five innings down in Albuquerque, got a couple of at bats, 0 for 2. Well, his quality of bat has been missed. I've pointed that fact out a lot. Gerardo Parra brought some stability to the lineup. That's a strike. One and two on Hannigan. Mike Tauchman on deck. That's three strikeouts, three of the five hitters that Hernandez has faced. First 10,000 fans through the gates for the July 17th Rockies versus Padres game will receive a coupon for a Hebrew National Dollar hot dog. Rockies just five hits tonight, and they have not had a hit since the Valleca two run home run in the fourth. 11 straight retired by a combination of Scott Feldman. Guy just brought back to the big leagues this year, rookie Ariel Hernandez. He started the year in Double A Pensacola. You'll see guys move quickly through the ranks if you have velocity like Hernandez is showing. Gerardo Parra tonight has gotten four plate appearances, one for three and a walk for Albuquerque. All goes well. You can see Gerardo against the White Sox this weekend. It'll be a welcome sight. This is about a month with that quad injury, which you kind of figured would be the case. And remember when he went down, you were kind of alluding to this, Billy. He was on fire. He's a quality of bat every single night, giving you at least three or four quality of bats. 3 and 0 on Talkman. Blackman on deck. We can do this as broadcasters. You can do it now because you're not playing anymore. When this week started, seven games at home against two teams that are well beneath 500. 
case of the Reds, there's another strike. One of the worst teams on the road in baseball. Worst starting pitching in baseball. He said, all right, the Rockies can go five and two. Give them turn the ship around a little bit, momentum going into the break, everybody rests, and then you gear up for the stretch run. It'd be a, it'd be a great week. Yeah. Still possible. Rockies one and one. There's a walk to Tockman. There you go. And that breaks the string of 11 straight retired. And it'll allow Charlie to hit here in the seventh. So Brian Price will double switch. Probably flip out Suarez at third. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Rockies leading 4-3, bottom of seven at 20th and Blake. Visual look back brought to you by Cooney Lexus. That ball went out of the ballpark for John Gray, his first career home run. All it went was 467 feet. Rockies have a 4 3 lead. Pat Malika also a two run home run tonight. Cooney Lexus look back. Tony Singrani is on now for Cincinnati to face Charlie Blackman. Suarez who made the final out in the top of the seventh comes out. Harris Mendy Alcantara is in at third base for the Reds. Pretty good year for Sincrani. Birthday boy today, 28th birthday. Very difficult on lefties. It was across his body, good fastball. He's also known throughout the league as having a great pickoff move to first. Talkman will get a conservative lead, one would think. You want Charlie to swing the bat here. Two outs. Ball one. Charlie a single in the first inning. He's one for three. Fifth inning in Los Angeles, still one nothing LA behind Alex Wood over Zach Godley and the Diamondbacks. Charlie hits it on the ground. Joey Votto's there. And the Rockies done in their half of the seventh. We move to the eighth. 4 3 Rockies. Jake McGee will be in.
Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Say yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by the Lodge Casino, your first choice for fun. In Lodo, the Rockies in the eighth inning leading four to three. They had a four to one lead. They'll hand the baseball to Jake McGee. A solid year for Jake. A whip of just basically one and the league hitting only 206 against him. He's going to get Scott Shevler, Jose Peraza, and Tucker Barnhart, 6, 7, and 8 in the Reds lineup. This is where the Rockies have excelled this year. One run games late. What you'd like is perfection in these last two innings. If, you, if you're perfect, you avoid Joey Votto in the ninth. Shebler has hit much better against lefties this year. Steps in tonight. He's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. With the exception of one year, Scott was telling me in the minor leagues, he hit lefties well, and then he got you know, to the big leagues briefly with the Dodgers, and there's no way he was going to hit against lefties. So then you have to overcome the perception that you're a platoon guy. One and one. The power on power. Jake McGee throws that fastball. Not exclusively, but pretty darn close. Well, when you have a fastball that good, and you can throw it above the belt, why throw anything else? Jake falls behind three and one. Well, Shebler knows fastball's coming. Three one pitch. He's going to cheat. Foul tip three and two. He did just that. He looked, he looked to make this a tie game. Hitters will pick their their moments to swing big to cheat knowing that a fastball count is coming the scoreboard dictates it's telling you you know what Jake McGee features the other reason Jake's so effective late games typically does not walk people ninety sevens fouled off. Jake out of Reno, Nevada. Swung on and missed one out in the eighth. Had a little more pepper on that heater at 98. Not only that, it was a, it was a little bit higher. This is what makes Jake so good. The fastball above the belt. Where a hitter can't catch up to it. And the sequence for McGee was all fastball. Power on power, down 3-1. 3-1 count, he's upside down. Still able to throw the fastball past him. Peraza swings and fouls off the first pitch. 0 and 1. But he's gone through uh, some tums lately. Oh yeah. 
Sharp. Single to left. That'll bring up Barnhart. Ten hits for the Reds tonight, just five for the Rockies. Barnhart is kind of the reverse of Shebler. He's hit better against righties than lefties. 167 against lefties. A lot of base runners for the Reds throughout the game. Eight left on base already. The Rockies only have left three. That's there. The Rocks end up hanging on. It will be one of those statistical anomalies where you're not used to seeing the opponent out hit you and commit two errors in the same game. Runner going, and it's fouled off. I'm not sure that's a hit and run. Peraza had a great jump. Barnhart probably kicking himself, even though you probably get to two strikes. Peraza easily would have had second base stolen. He's a good base stealer. He's 15 out of 19. That's another running count. One and two. Coming back to the same verbiage, man. Every season you go through a period where nothing is easy. That's why you hear about the grind of baseball. You think of the Rockies' last two wins. They're only two in the last couple of weeks. Five three on Monday against Cincinnati. It's not exactly a blowout. And then six to three Friday night down in Arizona but you know a three run game against lineups like Arizona or, or Cincinnati it's it, it's not like you're uh, going to get a snack figuring out this one's over as if he forgot there were two strikes. I mean, that's why Barnhart was so upset about it. Super Supermo. And again. Looks like good pitch. Yeah, good pitch. Shows it to Kerwin behind the plate. And look, that's a nonchalant. He thought it was strike two. He didn't rip it apart. Now you got to worry about Peraza going again. Two outs. Alcantara with his first at bat. The last, call them laughers, right? The last easy street win for the Rockies was June 10th at Wrigley Field against Chicago. Hoffman was dominant. The Rockies got after their former. Uh, Pitcher Eddie Butler and they won nine to one. They got him picked off and the throw to second. Out at second base. Good throw by Mark Reynolds to Pat Valeka. 
Brian Price wants to make sure naturally. If he's out, this is a great tag by Valenka to get it down. Reynolds had to wait. It took a while for McGee to get the ball over to first. It's up. Can't tell there. They're going to review this. And you know what? He may be safe. And you're right, Jake picked him off, but he threw a change up to Reynolds. Hannigan walked back towards home plate. I don't know that you know that's the one. Good news is we always say when it's really close a lot of times it's tough to overturn and he was called out. Tell if there's contact, Spilly. I bet you it's going to be one of those shades of gray, the stands, and no clear and convincing evidence to confirm or overturn the call. Yeah. Hopefully that is the deal. This would be huge for another reason, Spilly, for a couple reasons. One, you keep a runner out of scoring position, naturally. And if you get off the field here, now it's 9-1-2 for Greg Holland and the possibility again of avoiding having to face Joey Votto. Canadian Ichiro. He's stuck Out. with it. Yep. That is big. So Jake McGee picks off Peraza. 4-3, middle of eight. Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more. The Rockies would love to score seven or more. They're up four to three right now, bottom of the eighth inning. It's uh, Tapia, Arenado, and Cargo against Tony Singrani. Singrani got the final out of the seventh inning. He got Charlie Blackman on a ground ball to first. Tapia got the barrel on that bunt, which is not what you want to do. It's a huge inning for the Rockies. Punch a run across some way, somehow. Would help if you can get this kid on base. With his speed. One 
and one on Ronel Tapia. Rockies have been out hit 10 to 5. Questions all the time. Tapia. It's one of his habits is to smell the bat after there's any contact, and that was just a little foul tip. One, two, and he's gone. Tapia is chasing some pitches out of that Subaru strike zone. It's another night of double-digit strikeouts for the Rockies. They've struck out ten times tonight. Nolan's 0 for 3. Again, the last Rockies hit was Vallejo's two run home run to right center in the fourth inning. Grani reminds me of Jake McGee with the fastball. Just challenging hitters above the belt. And this is to second. Peraza, two outs. That'll bring up Cargo. Walk in the first, strike out in the third, and a ground ball into the shift in the sixth inning. Alcantara for Cincinnati against Greg Holland in the ninth, then Billy Hamilton and Zach Kozar. If anybody reaches, Joey Votto would hit. Let's see if Cargo takes advantage of the way that the Reds are shifting on him. I think with two outs, you want to you, know, you want to let the big dog eat, I right? Mean, yeah, but if you're not not barking too loud of late. Take what they give you. You know, with with nobody out, even with one out, I would agree with that. But I know he's had a tough year, but he still can turn on one quickly and give you a two-run lead. Because if he if he, to your point, it was a bunt single or, or you know, base hit to the left side, Cargo doesn't run anymore, so you got to go station by station. Now Deck has 19 home runs. Yeah, I understand that. Guy at the plate's got more than 200 in his career. I, I want to see Cargo hit. I'm just saying that I'm trying to get something. Ooh. Ooh no. That one hurts. That's all it is. And fortunately, he seems to be all right. Kind of quickly waved off Keith Duggar. Let's see if he catches him on the wristband. It looks like that's where it got him. Missed the hands, which is great. Yeah, caught him right. His wristband. So Reynolds, Cargo drawing a throw. That counts as a quality of bat. Ten. But only two since nobody out in the fourth. First pitch fastball right in that Subaru strike zone, not the pitch that Mark was looking for. Ball in the strike on Reynolds, single scored in the fourth. So 
Uh, Mark hits a double or extra base hit. Make sure you text 89269 and text N4. This guy in the All-Star game. John Gray, still the pitcher record on the plus side. Scott Feldman, who started, is on the other side for Cincinnati. And that misses three and one. Good eye from Reynolds. Mark leads the club and walks with 39. He had a good pass there, didn't he? Perfect swing. He's missed it. He's looking at where that ball was. Usually he'll leave a mark. I can guarantee you it was right on the sweet spot. Scoring position now for the guy who swung the bat better than anybody this evening, Pat Valeka. Sharp single, two run home run, and a line drive to deep center field. See if Valeka can give the Rockies some insurance here in the eighth. The first 10,000 fans Saturday, July 8th, will receive a Marvel superhero bobblehead courtesy of King Supers. for the Rockies since Vallejo went deep in the fourth. It's huge for these guys. Two outs, nobody on. Cargo gets hit by the pitch. Reynolds works the walk. And then Vallejo, short swing, middle of the plate. He yeah. makes a pay. Have a nine patty barrels. Yeah. First three hit game for the former UCLA star. Amarista's been called back. Trevor Story's going to pinch hit. And Brian Price is going to bring in a right-hander to face Trevor Story. It'll be Austin Bryce. Pat Vallega coming through big time here in the bottom of the eighth.
Coming to Macarena. That's no. They're rowing the boat. Is that what they're doing? Yeah, they're rowing the boat forward. Rockies are on the boat. Got a Brian McCann fan on the end helping out. Might be the only one. So Trevor Story will pinch hit. Austin Bryce will make his 19th appearance. He just came back to the big leagues a uh, short time ago from Louisville. An ERA close to six. Two on. It all began with two outs. Cargo was hit on the wrist. Mark Reynolds walked for the 40th time this year. And Valleca, a sharp single to center. He's got three ribbies tonight. Rockies up five to three. Story hitting for Amarista. The best friend of a closer, insurance runs. Bryce will work with four different pitches as a fastball, a changeup, curveball, and slider. Again, when you're a when you're a Rockies hitter facing one of these Reds relievers for the first time, there's no real book for him. Ball and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two outs, a run in. So we'll go to the ninth. The Rockies have a 5-3 lead on Cincinnati. They'll ask Greg Holland to get the final three outs. get closed out in the top of the ninth. The Rockies lead five to three. We're getting ready for the Toyota Post Game Show. Jenny Kavnar with the Hall of Famer Tracy Ringlesby. We're going old school up here. We're going real style topicals. What else could I do? So I'm going to dish them up for you. You ready? Right. Okay. V. It's not for Valleca. It's for victory. Well, Valleca, Valleca is a big part of the victory. Gets a start today at shortstop. Gets a step in there. Three RBI. They're up five to three. Pretty good job for him. Uh, what shade of gray did you see today with that big home run? That was a brighter shade of gray. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah. And the brighter <laughs> shade of gray shown onto the mound Ooh. when he hit that two run home run. Longest home run in StatCast history for a pitcher. The StatCast era, if and you will. <laughs> we, we're not allowed to say era. I work at MLB.com. Hey, longest home run for a Rocky this year. That's pretty impressive. If Huey were here, I'd throw it back with pitchers can hit. 
but he's not here. So Spilly, pitchers can hit, buddy. All right, they right, can. right, right. They yes, can. yes. John Gray hit it really, really far, and the Rockies needed that. They absolutely needed that. Pat moves over to second base, and Trevor Story is in his customary spot at shortstop. There is Mendy Alcantara against Greg Holland. Holland looking for his 28th save, 29 opportunities. First pitch is right there, strike one. And Holland has been the best story in baseball if you're looking at free agent signs. He has been everything that the Rockies could have ever hoped for. 31 and a third innings, 42 strikeouts. Bullpen is built from the ninth inning backward. Yeah. 0 and 2. When he gets the two strikes, it is basically a slider thon. 70% of the time, he will throw it. For a hitter who knows it's coming, he's not going to hit it. Kansas City, they said it's a splider. You couldn't tell. We have trouble telling whether it's a splitter or a slider. What it is is strike three. Uh oh. Now Contra is going to reach. Does that not figure? We've been saying this for a while. Nothing easy right now when you're going through one of those periods. You get a strike out and the guy reaches. It's just a filthy pitch down in the dirt. And it's going to go as a wild pitch, but Ryan Hannigan, let me see where this bounce. Ryan's yeah, went off the plate, which is hard. It's one of the toughest spots for a catcher to keep in front of him as soon as it skips off that plate. And now you have Billy Hamilton. Nolan will creep in a little bit. Payback for all those wins that were really comfortable for the Rockies and going 21 games over 500. 5 3 Colorado in the ninth, one on, nobody out. Two strikes. Just goes to show how important that two out rally was in the bottom of the eighth inning and how big of an at bat it was for Valleca. That extra run. <laughs> to short, can the Rockies turn this on the move? Double play on the fastest man in baseball. The ball always finds you when you come in the game. Trevor Story moved quickly and fired a dart to Mark Reynolds, two outs. I need to point out, watch how Trevor Story touches second base. He'll touch it with his left foot and throw off of that foot. That's how rare of a throw this is going to be for him. And sometimes you'll see a guy step across reset his feet this one he had no time to even try great pick by Reynolds two outs nobody on and Zach Cozart at the plate double in the seventh he only hit tonight for Cozart. He's the starting shortstop for the National League next Tuesday in Miami. Tyler Chatwood tomorrow afternoon against Sal Romano.
Rockies five runs six hits two errors three runs ten hits no errors for Cincinnati but the Rockies again have the lead one one and a base hit and now Votto will come up as the tying run. Two all stars going at it. Cozart gets the better of Greg Holland. Quality approach by Cozart. Making sure he stays on the slider, not afraid to get beat by the fastball. And it's a pass of Valeka, who's at second base in a, in a different shift the way Cozart was hitting. Bottom a triple, single walk, and fly ball to left field. That was close, top of the strike zone, but called a ball. Yeah, right at the top of that Subaru strike zone, and that's what Holland wants that pitch. Votto, one. Second time Votto's ever seen Holland. The only other time he walked against him. Two and oh. Two Great pitches. hitters like this. You see this with Goldschmidt. I reference Goldschmidt because the Rockies see Goldschmidt so frequently. You, you try to be very cautious, and next thing you know, you're in an offensive count. Two and oh. The lake is on the outfield grass story position or up the middle. That's one of the rare times you'll see Joey Votto cheat. Votto is looking for a fastball in. Rockies have been throwing underneath Votto's hands this entire series. Two outs, Cozart at first. We're in the ninth. And it's three and one now on the Toronto native Joey Votto. Originally a second round pick. off the extreme third base side of the rubber. And he lost him. And now Scooter Jeanette will come up. Vada was 0 for 5 last night, reaches base three to four times tonight. Two for three with two walks. And so far, the hitting star for Cincinnati in this series is the guy at the plate. Scooter Jeanette, two home runs in the series. Tonight, he has an RBI single. And a, a base hit, I should say, in the sixth inning as well. And scored a run. So he's two for four. Nine for 15 this year against Colorado. Speed it's 0 and 1. He said it's many times about Greg Holland as we've learned about him. We saw him pitch from afar. Brilliant with Kansas City, the top closers in the game. And he had Tommy John surgery. But this guy never gets rattled. If he does, he doesn't show it. Does not show it. That's what you want to see. Guys read body language. Teammates read body language. And he's calming. Oh one. Whoa. One and one.
hitting just 152 against Greg. 32,000 standing. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. Greg, a lot like Rafael Betancourt in that he is very deliberate, especially with any kind of traffic. You know how successful Rafi was in a Rockies uniform. Take as much time as you need. Yeah, you set the pace. One and two. Out of play. Couple mislocations for Greg Hall in the last two sliders. Hall typically likes to get that slider closer to the bottom of the strike zone. You can see that on the super strike zone. That was right in the middle. Pitch of the inning for Holland. Cozart and Votto aboard. They're two outs. Rockies up 5 3. Another 1 2. Round ball knocked down by Holland. He's got time to first ball game over. And the Rockies survive 5 3. This is not a game that the Rockies should have won. We mentioned if you get out hit by the opponent and you commit two errors, it is not a game you should win. The Rockies haven't won a game like this in three years. The last time dates back to 2014. Not only two errors, but an error by a guy who makes an error like once a millennium, Nolan Arenado, cost the Rockies a run. That's how odd this game was. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game, Patty Barrels. What a ball game. But also, let's not forget John Gray, who not only got the victory, he hit one of the longest home runs in baseball this year. That's the 14th longest home run with 467 feet. But Pat Blake is paid to hit the ball. And tonight, a career best three hits, three RBIs, and that one at the bottom of the eighth was enormous with two outs. So our Jimmy John's delivery of the game provided by John Gray and Pat Valenka. Gray goes to 2-0. Feldman takes the loss 7-6. Holland with his 28 save. And with that, we go to Jenny and the Cowboy out in center field for the happy recap. All right, Drew, thanks so much. 97 degrees. That's what it was at first pitch. The second hottest temperature for a game here at Coors Field. The Rockies offense finally heated up to match it. 5-3 to three, the final. We'll recap this one in the Toyota Post Game Show.